in in Jewish thought, worry uh, is is um, is at least is or is or is, is on on par with uh, a sin. Being worried, uh, overly worried, irrationally worried, living in a state of worry. It's not that it's being depressed and being uh, anxious and worried. The, the, it's not that it's a sin in and of itself. It's that it leads to all sorts of sins. Because if a person can't think clearly, and a person is always down in the dumps, and a person is not able to access their uh, creative abilities or their intellectual abilities or their emotional, everything is, is halted, is stifled, and a person is led down the path towards sin. So again, it's not that it itself is a sin, but in some ways it's worse than any sin because it just perpetuates this, this state of existence that, is, that, that leads a person in a in direction that isn't, isn't good. So, so everything that undermines health... Uh, in Jewish thought, anything that undermines a person's health is something that is is sort of sinful, or or at least uh, along those lines. So again, it's not it's not that these things worry, anxiety, depression, uh, and I don't mean that in the clinical sense. I mean just a state of depression that that a person that a person is affecting their emotional health and and oftentimes their physical health. Well, we're not allowed to hurt ourselves. Uh, in Jewish thought. And so we need to, uh, if we are hurting ourselves, whether that's physically, which oftentimes it is, I mean, we're not like beating ourselves up, but if we're, if we're not correcting an overbearing amount of constant anxiety, and th that's certainly going to, afflect, uh, to affect our blood pressure, that's going to affect our, our heart rate, our, all sorts of different uh, physiological uh, uh, matters in our body. And so through worry, we destroy the work of God. And, and, and God created us. He got, wanted us to be healthy. He wanted us to be sound. He wanted us to be cheerful. He wanted us to serve him with joy. That's part of the reason that we're here. That's like, that, that's like the, the pinnacle of why we're here. And so when we're constantly worried about everything uh, and sort of living a life of pessimism, living a life of anxiety, of worry, of nervousness, this is something that we have to galvanize within ourselves to say, you know what, I, I'm sick of living like that. I'm sick of, I'm sick of uh, having that be my worldview. And so we don't command the person and just say, well, don't worry, right? It doesn't work like that, right? right? We, we simply give a new point of view, a new attitude toward life, right? Torah thought... Torah thought is kind of like, like a therapy. And all forms of therapy, if you think about it, are really just teaching processes, whereby the troubled individual is taught alternative options. Right? It's, it's, there's, an, there's an alternate way of looking at this. There's an alternate way of living a less self-defeating, more productive life. And so again, it's not we don't just tell a person, don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. We, uh, the idea of embracing a Torah mindset, the idea of embracing Torah values, a Torah worldview, a God worldview, a God-centered view, a God-centered life, is something that is key in shifting the way that we view our life and our surroundings. It's necessary to first change our outlook in life. Well, one of the one of the play, one of the areas that that people oftentimes um, get this a little bit wrong, or maybe even a lot wrong, is they try to change their outside circumstances. So I'm anxious, I'm worried, I'm whatever, and they want to. They say the only way that I can fix this situation is by uprooting myself. Uh, physically, and putting myself in a, in a different situation. If I get a new job, if I get a new spouse, if I get a new situation, whatever it is, then I'll be happy. Because they, they look at X, Y, or Z external thing and say, that is the reason that I'm not happy. That is the reason that I'm unfulfilled. That's the reason why I'm nervous. That's the source of my anxiety. And meanwhile, things aren't... It's not about how it is on the outside. It's not about what the situations are on the outside. Most of the time, it's the way that we're reacting to them on the inside. So it's necessary to first change our outlook on our life. We also have to simplify our mode of living. 
Okay? In, in Jewish thought, we see that, that a mere behavior change is not the answer. We have to combine it with a behavioral change, with a God-oriented outlook. A person has to return to a spiritually oriented mindset, a, a life that is permeated with the realization of God's presence, of thinking of life in, a, in, in spiritual terms, as far in, in purposeful terms. The loss of faith or a failure to apply uh, apply faith to you know as a, as a living it in all of the ways in, in all of the affairs that we have in life is is more contributing to prevalent nervousness the nervous condition of mankind than anything else mankind today humans people uh, have lost a has lost contact with their creator, not not in any real objective sense. We're all just as connected with God uh, in an objective sense as we ever were. But as far as having that awareness, being in touch with that, a lot of us today have lost a certain sense of that. And so when people fail uh, uh, in this area, when when a person thinks that it's is that uh, that uh, when 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 a person fails. And a person fails himself, and uh, when 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 his when his powers fail him, and, and a person has has nowhere to turn for hope. Uh, if you if you're not looking at God as uh, with you, as a part of your journey, as uh, something or someone that you have a an engaging, interacting life with, then as soon as a person fails, they feel like they're, they're, they're drowning, that they have nothing and nowhere to turn. They find no inherent harmony between yourself and uh, the, the life in which you live. The, the one that knows God, the one that knows God, that, that knows God is at his right hand, that knows God is inside with him and has charged him with the mission, that person can't be moved. That person has a tranquil heart. That person has a prayerful mind. Uh, that person cannot know the nervousness, which is the result of baseless fears and anxieties and a sense of futility. So Jewish thought is not simply connecting God to the problem, implying that if a person makes that, that divine connection, all the problems are miraculously going to disappear. Instead, uh, Jewish thought maintains that having God at one's right hand reminds us that the divine presence is within us as well. And as a result of this, we have the inner strength to deal with our own problems in a calm and productive manner. We are all aware that there are life situations that negatively affect us, uh, of which we have virtually no control. There are always things that are going to affect us that are beyond our kin. Jewish thought, though, reminds us that we don't we 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 don't have to. It reminds we we do have to control we do have control of the responses uh, and the reactions that we. Uh, give to these situations and circumstances. What shapes us in our life, in our life story, is not adversity, the things that that uh, we can't help that just kind of come up in our life. It's how we respond to adversity. Okay? And so when we trust in God, failure is impossible. Or we see life in a new light, our outlook changes. What we formerly considered a stumbling block is now a stepping stone. What, that which we, we formerly regarded as an obstacle now appears in its true meaning as an instructive experience in our life. It's not, again, it's not the adversity that we face. It's how we react to it that shapes us most. So, again... There's no magic cookbook, and this is not a magic cookbook approach that's designed to ensure that we're never again going to feel badly, we're never going to be nervous about anything again, we're never going to be ang anxious about something, but it's a reminder that there are always, there are, are ways that we can, that we have available to us to experience the divine within us and around us, and thereby assisting us in establishing a harmony, a tranquility that God intended for us. Peace of mind 
means having a perfect harmony between the various elements that constitute a person. Harmony between the forces within us, with the forces without us. Uh, there is an inner tranquility, an inner silence that's not disturbed by the agitation and the fermentation of life's uh, stern combats. So here we see a most important method for implementing the desired changes to a person's self-defeating way of life, to affect a state of optimism from pe pessimism. The, this change to shift from pessimism to optimism is done with an element of faith in the divine spark within us that it's the core of long-lasting results, that we recognize that we are put here with a purpose, that God has infused us with life for a mission, and that we, and God is with us to empower us to be able to accomplish it. The one without faith, the person who doesn't have faith, carries alone the entire burden of all the tasks and all the achievements. Whenever he finds himself at the threshold uh, uh, about a doubtful future, whenever that person's confronted with uh, threatening circumstances in their life, his soul sinks into depression and fear. The future appears dreary. The future appears hopeless. Pessimism makes a person unsociable. It chills a person's relation with their fellow person, with their fellow human. Optimism is significant. It's significant of, of one's faith and one's peace. Pessimism speaks of discontent and doubt. The pessimist, by definition, must ha not have a spiritual attitude. Uh, because how could a person have faith in God and be pessimistic at the same time. A God who enlivens you. A God who gave, uh, gives life to you. A God who gives you a purpose. A God who wants you to accomplish that purpose. A God who helps you along that person purpose. If you have that as your core, if you have that as the nucleus of your life, how can a person, how can a person be pessimistic? So a person being pessimistic is obviously an indicator that there is a necessity for that person to enhance their faith, the awareness of their own faith, their own mission in life, the, own, the, the idea that God wants them to succeed at their mission, that God helps them to succeed at, the, at their mission. So the, the, we have to think about this. We have to, we have to make this, uh, um, we have to be aware, we have to take time out of our life to make sure that we're in sync with these ideas.